Hello everyone! So it's, I've started my spring semester, my second semester in college, and I, it's it's kind of a, a downer week and for homework, so I decided I could take the time to make this, make a video like this tonight. So, one thing that I really want to talk about is I now have my new HD camcorder. Now, I actually ordered the this camera the night after I recorded my last video, but when I got it two days later, it had a cracked lens in it, and so that's what I get for buying it used. Fortunately, it was through Amazon, so I got a full refund for it. So, I bought this camera brand new, and oh, it was so expensive. But during the time I made videos in January and December, my my Google payments went up significantly. So I figured I could, you know, scrape some extra money and go ahead and buy this camera, you know, on top of my SSD. So. It is the JVC Evrio, um, so I think the model number is GZ-HM550BUS. So, it is now time to start recording with it. The days of standard definition are over, and now... Oh wait, hang on, it's set. It's set on a picture mode. Okay? Alright, let me get this in here. Okay. And now, full high definition has been, is now in effect. For those of you that currently have connections that can handle that, I currently don't yet, but I assume some people out there, and maybe sometime in the future I will be able to, so it'll be nice to get videos in HD. So one advantage is this wide-angle lens that I got that specifically made for the Sony camcorders fits right on this camera. So, let's see, let's take it off now. Uh, uh, uh. Right there, and actually this, ah, there it goes. <laughs> this camcorder needs needs an adapter, but this one, but this camera no longer needs the adapter on it. So now I can see much more, and so it has a bigger lens. So that's kind of nice. Although since it has a bigger lens, it doesn't have that good of a macro. So or it's not as good as this camera, but it's still sufficient. So now let's get this camera on that tripod and get this view back in. Okay, it, it looks like it's sturdy for once. <laughs> so now we got it back up. And notice that the the lighting quality probably looks a lot better than on that camera. It it has this quote unquote super low lex light. Basically, it gains up everything, but it kind of gives it a ghostly figure. I don't know if there's enough light in this room that it's not happening. It might be, but it's still much better than on than on this camera. And man, this camera feels so much bulkier because that one is so much smaller now. And oh yeah, about my surroundings. Yeah, I just, my mom, as you could see, had her sewing machine set up. So I just thought I'll just stick it on there and I'll just sit on the dog crate <laughs> down here. So we've been crating our dogs the past few months. So <laughs> I figured, eh, why well, find a chair when I could just sit on it. And I'm recording down here because the family went to bed and I'd be making too much noise upstairs. So, some of the other advantages with this camera is it does have a better sound quality. And, you know, also I don't have that motor noise that you hear with this camera, you know. So, and I've also been having, like, a tr some trouble. Yeah, like there. See, it kind of blanked out. Like, but sometimes it's much terrible. Like, I turn it on and it blanks out. And so it's been very, it's been very tough to use when recording family moments, so this camera is much more convenient. And it records onto 32 gigs of internal memory, so it's just plug in through a USB port and click and drag the .mts files onto my desktop. Although my computer is having a little bit of trouble editing AVCHD, so I may have to look into how to speed things up. Oh, I also upgraded my video editing software, that was back in November, to PowerDirector 9. So and that, and I've also got Windows Vista 64-bit on the desktop upstairs, which I normally edit on, and this new version of PowerDirector is made specifically for 64-bit, so it may, it may be, make it easier for me to edit videos, although the fact that I can just click and drag the files onto the computer will speed things up immensely. Before, I would have to hook up this camera through the little firewire port, rewind it all the way back to the beginning, hit capture, and let it play through the whole video as it captures it, but this one is just a... it. yeah, as I said. I currently have it on the lowest quality setting, but... It, it, like, there's four different settings on this camera, but I feel... 
I feel like there's barely any difference between the four of them. Like the lowest quality selling setting, you can faintly tell when looking at the highest quality setting, but when when one hour of footage takes up only two gigabytes on the lowest setting, and the highest quality footage takes up like ten gigabytes, which is five times more, you can, I'm gonna keep it on the lower setting. So yeah, even for all my YouTube videos, because there's not much of a difference. So, and a, f a few nice things that this camera can take is slow motion. It claims it can take up to 600 frames per second, but for some reason I can go get only 300 frames out of it. And so, here's a few slow motions that I got earlier. So, and it also has a time-lapse feature built right in, so I would have been able to get my lunar time-lapse so much more easily. And it only has a, tw a 10 optical zoom, while this camera has a 20. That's not much, because, you know, a 20 is only twice as much as, as 10, so instead of a zoom like th that, a, a camera like this has a zoom that goes like this far, this camera only has a zoom that goes that far. It's not that much of a difference, it's by multiples, not by really a uh, slider bar. So, and, but with full HD, that is basically, I can zoom in six times, uh, I can do a six times digital zoom on this camera with my video editing software and still get standard definition. So I could have had a much more magnified image of the moon with this camera, and I can, it would have saved up so much space, because I currently used two full mini DV tapes in long play mode, and that was three hours of footage. So I had to capture all of those, and then I had to render them up, I, although PowerDirector only speeds up things up to ten times, so I had to speed it up once, I had to render it, speed it up again, render it, and that took forever to do, because the first one was like three hours, the next one was like, I don't know, 40 minutes, so it's just gonna make things Things so much easier now. Oh, and another important thing in cubing news is, I'm sure you've found it out by now, but the V-Cube 2 came out sometime last week, I think? So, but since I spent so much on that SSD, this camera, PowerDirector 9, Windows 7, I, I really need to lay down and save up my money. So, even though I've been getting more money from my YouTube videos, it's not quite as much as my job at Golden Corral, but it's getting close. But I really feel I should be saving up my money for quite a while, so I'll probably be getting it after several months. Now, if it was the VCube 8 that came out, I'd seriously be reconsidering that. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, and another thing is I bought a used camera on, a, a, just a small digital camera on eBay for like 29 bucks. It was just used, and I was able to send it up on, on a kite and get some fancy pictures of our house and such. The, what, one thing that happened is I bought this camera first. I thought this was a perfectly good wor working Canon. It, it had continuous shooting, which is what I needed, you know, to tape the button down to get pictures on a kite. But it's like, it weighs like a pound, well maybe not a pound, but, and it doesn't even take SD cards. I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> so, this thing cost me like 24 bucks, so that was an investment down the tube. So, I'm open to anyone who wants to buy it. Maybe, maybe you have a child that you'd like to give a camera to that, you know, you don't, mind them screwing up, so if if they're in the very unlikely instance that anyone else is willing to buy this, then it, yeah, make me an offer. It works perfectly fine. I think I have batteries in it. No, image, okay, so yeah. It's like an old man trying to get the lens out, but still, I would think it would be good for a child, so if, if anyone really wants it, then yeah, you can have it, because... <laughs> Just make me an offer on that. And let's see, uh, for videos, I would very much like to make that revised VCube 6 modification tutorial. And I've been hanging on to someone's VCube 6 that they hired me to modify, and I've been doing it for much too long. So I'm hopefully going to try to get that up this weekend. And I'm also going to be explaining, I don't have 
Oh, my cubes are upstairs now. Is that there is a way to solve a V cube six without pins in it? So I'll be showing a way to do that. As long as you keep track where the V cube logo is, and as long as your V cube logo is in between the two glued pieces, then you can actually solve it. Or you can actually solve a cube without any pins at all, without inner layer inner layers happening. You just have to be mindful on where that thing is. It's not too hard to get used to. So I would really much like to make a new tutorial and let's see is there anything else to talk about maybe not oh i'll be getting a rubik slide pretty soon i entered a contest on twisty puzzles forum this little quiz thing so it's a an advertising scheme by the technosource the company that makes the rubik's revolution the touch cube and now the rubik slide but honestly i'll probably be selling it on ebay or to anyone else or just just um like a uh, closed auction or whatever you call it just through my email <laughs> because it's not a twisty puzzle you know I've got bop it extreme too upstairs and in my opinion it's a little electronic game that I mean it's not a puzzle but you know I'd rather just play it with a Rubik's Cube you know after you ma master an electronic puzzle you're not gonna really play with it that much that's why I haven't really bought puzzles like the the snake or the magic or the the Rubik's 360 Oh yeah, and thank you everyone for giving me your feedback about the direct cuts in the last video. I, I'm really gonna, I really like the feel, it's it's not that big of a deal, but I really like the feel of direct cuts much better. It just helps with the flow, so yeah, I'm gonna continue making videos like that, so I'm glad. You know, just about every YouTuber I, you see on YouTube uses direct cuts, so yeah, I'm glad I've gotten onto that. So, oh man, I just realized my YouTube background is far outdated. You know, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to keep up with it, so I may just use a standard background, and, you know, you know what I mean by keeping up with it is displaying more and more puzzles, because that, that's really hard to do. You have to take a picture of a cube and with a 3x3 three three next to it so that you can resize it for size comparison. I have to take a picture of it on a blue binder so that if it, there's any reflected material, it... it fits with the background, and and then I have to crop it out in Microsoft Publisher and add the glow around it. So I may just choose, when when I have time one of these days, to just, you know, get get rid of the five awesome cubers thing up there, since I haven't been making Monday video blogs any, any while in that, yeah. So I hope to get that all straightened out, and I really need to get a, a logo, I need to take the time to just come up with a new logo. Oh, and a little, you know, those little display images. I need to remake an image, since they took mine off when they redid the new the video scale thing or the, the new video page so i need to get one that that fits that that in that little tiny space so yeah i've got a lot to work to do to keep this channel updated but at least i've made videos a lot more frequently than i did last year so <laughs> yes um yeah i hope to get better at that all right goodbye